thing that we need to do is thoroughly brush Charlie before he gets in the tub. Charlie's not matted, but he does have some dead hair in his coat that we need to remove so we can get him thoroughly clean in the tub and get him ready for his groom. We're trying to remove any dead hair. This is what will cause the mats. If we don't remove it and we just go ahead and wash him, bathe him and dry him and clip him, he's going to mat a lot easier than he would if we properly prepped the coat, which is to thoroughly brush it out before the bath. The next thing I would do before the bath is to remove any hair from inside the ear canal by plucking. And Charlie has minimal, as you can see. So we're just going to gently remove that with our hemostat, little bits at a time. Good job, buddy. And he doesn't have much, so. I think we're good. The reason we do this is because having hair inside of the ear like this can definitely harbor debris and build up of things like that inside the ear. So we just want to make sure that we remove the, the bulk of it. That's all. What's inside the ear. Inside only. Not on the earlobe. Now Charlie's in the tub and we're just going to give him a really thorough wash. It's important to thoroughly wash every dog before you groom them. If Charlie had an abundance of coat, I may have taken some of that off by doing a little pre-trimming prior to the bathing process because uh, then, then he won't have to spend so much time drying, you know, with the force dryer and the sand dryer. Charlie was here six weeks ago, so he's good to go. Thoroughly wash him, then I'm going to rinse him and then I'm going to condition him, and then I'm going to thoroughly rinse him one more time. Then we'll be ready to get on the table and start drying Charlie. She is a fluffy coat, like a poodle or Bichon, so we do like to do a lot of fluffing on this breed so that we can get a beautiful scissor trim on them with our finishing work and our snap-on comb work, which we are going to be doing in a little while. Thoroughly rinsing our dogs is so important, guys. Hold that nose down, rinse the eyes, then give them a break from the face. Then come back, make sure you don't get water in the ears. I hold the ear close to the head like this. So I can really rinse it good. Rinse the eyes good, very important, under the chin. Thoroughly rinse your dog, guys, until the water runs clear. That means there's no more product left in the coat. It's okay, big boy. Yeah, I know, sweetheart. If you leave product in your dog's coat, it's going to build up with debris and grime quickly because by leaving, the, by leaving product, which is conditioner or shampoo, in the coat gives build up something to adhere to, if that makes sense. So you want to thoroughly rinse. Plus you want to thoroughly rinse all the dander off your dog's skin and coat. And now that Charlie's rinsed, we need to thoroughly towel Charlie off as much as possible before we start the drying process. So I want to towel him off and get as much water out of this skin and coat as, as I can so that it speeds up our drying process. And one way to speed up that drying process is to definitely use the absorber towels. I have a link below if you guys are interested in picking them up. I use them all the time in my grooming shop now. I do not use regular towels at all to dry dogs. And the reason I like it is because they really pull so much water out of the skin and coat and saves me a lot of time on drying. And it saves the dog time on drying. They don't enjoy that. You simply wring it out. And continue on drying. If you are a first time purchase of the absorber towel by using my link, which I'm affiliated with below, 
you will receive 10% off of your first purchase of the absorber towel. That's one, two, three, or 10 towels, however many you need. If you enter the code go to groomer, it'll prompt you for that when you get to the website from my link, you'll receive 10% off. And the next thing that I do, right Charlie, is clean his ears now with an ear cleansing solution. I'm using the Bark to Basics ear cleaning solution. I really like it, it has witch hazel in it. It's gentle, it smells very fresh and the dogs don't seem to mind it at all. So I pull a cotton ball in half. I'm gonna saturate, for the most part, one half of this cotton ball. We're going to expose Charlie's ear and I'm going to kind of squeeze some of that down into his ear so it runs down in there and loosens up. We really want that to loosen up any buildup that's down inside his ear because I only want to wipe as far in as I can see. And then I will wipe the rest of his ear if he had any buildup. Charlie has very nice ears. Now what I'm hoping, since I put all that fluid down in there, I'm hoping he's gonna give us a good shake. And that, my friend, was awesome. Now I can come back in here and wipe off any excess with the dry cotton ball. Remember I pulled that in half? We're gonna wipe off any excess, anything that might have lifted out of the ear with his shake. And his ears really are fairly clean, you can see that. So but the reason I like to do this after the bath is in case any water may have found its way inside the ear during the bathing process, the ear cleaning solution will flush that water out of there so that if anything is left behind, it's ear cleaning solution which will evaporate. Water has bacteria in it and if he had a little bit of irritation down his ears, the bacteria in the water could cause this the beginnings of a ear infection. We don't want that. We don't want that, Charlie. Say no. No, we don't. No. no. The next thing we're going to do with Charlie, he's toweled off, he's up on the table, he's safely secured with a groomer's helper. I have my stand dryer on him. I'm going to gently brush Charlie's coat completely, his entire coat, before he's dry, his entire coat. This is going to also remove any dead hair that I was unable to remove by pre-brushing Charlie before the bath. So this is very important. This is a step that a lot of people never take. And this is a true professional secret, guys, to a successful groom. This is how you properly prepare a dog's coat for trimming. I'm just going to continue to thoroughly, gently, brush Charlie's entire coat before I force dry him and continue to fluff dry. Keep in mind after your dog is bathed, their skin is soft because of the water. You know, moisturize their skin and coat. So, you know, I'm actually using a matte zapper brush on him, which is an aggressive brush. But I'm being gentle, and it's so easy to get through the coat right now. I don't have to work hard. His coat is clean, it's conditioned, it was pre-brushed, and I can easily get through this coat. But I'm telling you, you will be amazed at the results that this produces if you take advantage of this step. And do not forget to do it. Groomers at home or professional groomers, this is a secret. But I'm telling you guys, because it will make all the difference in your grooms. Now that Charlie is thoroughly brushed out before I dry him, although I do have a stand dryer on him and I have been fluffing his ears and his head, but I do keep moving that stand dryer, pull some of the moisture out. I'm about to force dry him, but the thing I need to do before I do that is trim Charlie's nails. I like to trim Charlie's nails and all dogs' nails after the bath because the nail at that point is not as brittle. It's got a little moisture in it, just a little easier to work with in my opinion. So as you can see, now I have videos on my channel about how to trim nails. I'll link one in the card above. 
I push each nail with my ring finger forward so I can see it. We are trying to trim close to the quick. The quick is a little dot. You can see it there. That's on a clear nail. You can see the quick on a clear nail. You can see the quick on a dark nail. This nail is a little darker. You can see I can't go any further when I see that. If I go too much further, I'm going to get blood. I don't want to cause blood. It happens sometimes, but I do not want to cause that for my, for my babies. We'll do this one in slow motion for you. That's as far as we want to go. We did good. Now it's time to force dry, Charlie. I like to start at the back. I don't force dry anything around their head or their ears. If you don't have a force dryer, then skip this step, but don't skip the step of brushing your dog thoroughly when they exit the bath and they're still wet. You can let them air dry and come back when they're air dried and brush them out one more time and then you'll be ready for trimming if you don't have a force dryer. That's fine. The idea of the force dryer is to hold it as far away from the skin as the hair is long. So his hair is about an inch long, so I'm gonna hold the force dryer about an inch away. If I got too close, I can cause whip knots. We don't want that. So that's the rule of thumb for force drying, if anybody's curious. And we do not hold the force dryer in one place for long, because it does heat up. It's not as hot as a stand dryer. But remember, their skin is sensitive. They just got out of the bath. So I like to slowly move my force dryer to keep the dog safe and then I know I'm not going to warm up his skin too much or possibly burn him because you can burn a dog with a force dryer. A lot of people don't realize that. After I'm done force drying, I'm just going to follow up with a little more fluff drying here on his head, his ears, his tail, everything that I want very, very fluffy. If you don't have a stand dryer, which many of you don't, that's okay. After he's dry, come back and do this. You can use a hair dryer on low heat and low speed, but never hold the hair dryer close to your dog and hold it in one place. You have to constantly move it. Notice my stand dryer is, is more than a foot away from the dog because that's safe. And I can move it but I don't put it right on the dog, that is not safe. I wanna make sure that we always take care of our babies and we're protective of hurting them on the grooming table with tools. A lot of people may not realize some of this stuff, so I have to say it. And don't feel bad if you didn't know. Not everybody grooms dogs every day. Right, Charlie? Got a lot going on in here right now. Charlie's brother's over here behind us getting dried with the stand dryer on the table and now Charlie's ready for trimming. I have brushed him out thoroughly after I dried him. So I've brushed him now three times. If you can get a comb through your dog like this, then it's time to trim them. If you can't, then keep brushing until you can get a comb through your dog just like this on a number 10 blade, and I do use a hair back system by Hanby, so you'll see that and hear it, but you should be able to hear me fine because I'm mic'd. Um, we're using a zero comb. This is the wall stainless steel snap-on combs. It's a 5 8 inch trim, which means it's gonna leave about 5 8 of an inch of length. So this is how you seat it onto your blade. It's ready to go. At the base 
of the skull right here. Charlie's skull. Hold it, Charlie. Charlie is very squirmy on the table, so I need to be very careful and continue to keep him harnessed. All right, because I don't want him falling off the table. So we're going to start under the jaw from the earlobe. All this under the jaw is coming off. The back of the skull, behind the ear and the back of the skull, you can feel that skull bone right below that where it's all coming off. So everything from base of the ear to where the throat starts and the back of the skull. And I'm using my zero comb. And of course this hair back system makes snap on Snap one go work just uh, and clipper work a breeze. Holding that ear up. Remember, we're going to follow this around. You can go the opposite direction with a snap on comb. It's fine if that's more comfortable for you. And we're going to continue to do that around to the other side of Charlie's head. It's okay, big boy. Holding the ear up, coming right up under that jaw right where the throat is, to the base of the ear. Charlie, it's okay. So now we have what is going to be our head assembly and we will be scissoring this later. You can see what we've created. And I'm gonna get Charlie back on the grooming leash the way that he should be. I'm going to use this zero comb completely on Charlie's body and his legs. And I'm just contouring his body. I am not scooping off. I am completely contouring his body. Try to go with the lay of the coat. However, when we're talking about a Bichon, a Poodle, anything like that, that type of coat, the coat is different than, say, a drop coat like a spaniel or a retriever or something like that so it's kind of hard to mess up this coat type which is pretty awesome isn't it coming down the shoulder straight off the leg the chest hold this arm straight up just gently glide that clipper right along the shape of his leg we're not trying to leave any excess. Charlie, stop. Good boy. I know you don't care for it, but you're doing good, honey. Right down the top of his foot, just like so. Good. You can see that it's not perfect. We're going to be doing scissor work, so no worries. I like to take the tail and hold this leg right here at the hawk and gently tip it back like he was running and come down straight off of that flank, not into it, I'm coming straight off of it. Good. Just like that. Straight down the side of the leg. Snap on comb is merely setting the length. Don't forget that. We are going to have to do scissor work. Always, always, always have to do scissor work. And I'll show you that next. Now here on Charlie, I like to hold one leg up and come up this, the inside of the leg gently. We're just setting the length. We are going to have to scissor that, remember? And this side of Charlie is now done. Now here under the tail, I'm going to come at it towards his muscle here like this and always pull this leg up go down the other side and again just like that and this side of Charlie is all finished on the base of the skull about an inch down the tailbone both legs same snap on comb I'm gonna do the other side and then I'm gonna show you how I set the length on the top of his head. Now still with a 10 blade, I'm gonna pop an e-comb on, which leaves an inch. 
and I'm just going to blend. It's not going to take much. Forward, I'm coming down towards his brow, his visor. Coming over the ears. Here's the ear set where the ear connects to the head. Coming right above that. And I'm just setting the length for his top skull. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to take the same comb, hold the ear back, and come up the side of the cheek. It's really barely taken anything. I do want to point that out. It's just saving me some clipper work. Okay, we had a clipper malfunction. Now I had to switch over to this Andis AGC. I'm sorry, and I can't use my clipper back. I have a number 10 blade on. We're going to do a sanitary trim. I'm going to pull his tail and his leg up. I'm going to come this way. And then I'm going to go the opposite way, just right in here. If he was a female and had a vulva, that's what we'd be going towards the vulva. Okay, that's all I'm doing there. Now on the anus, we're going to go away from the anus in all four directions. Kind of hard to show on the camera all the time, guys. I'll do my best, okay? have my 10 blade. I'm only clipping to about the belly button. So I'm going to come right off the penis to about where the belly button is, which is right in front of the penis. And then we're going to come towards that in a V shape, kind of. We're just cleaning this off under here with a 10 blade. Good job. And it if your dog can't do this, you can do all this from the underside like I was just doing. With the 10 blade, I'm gonna clean off the earlobes, keep all the hair out of the way, gently, just there. You don't have to do this. I like to clean that off. Be careful, there's a flap right here. Don't come anywhere near that with your 10 blade or any blade, okay? Lastly, with a 10 blade, I am going to do an inverted V at the corners of his eyes, just like this. And I'm only clipping right at the corner in an inverted V shape. Good job, Charles. That's it. The rest I'll be scissoring. Now we have a 30 blade on our lovely Andis clipper with no hair vac system. I am going to shave the pads of the feet only with 30 blade. Notice I did all my 10 blade work before I removed that blade off my clipper. First I used my 10 blade underneath my snap-on combs and then I removed my snap-on combs and I used my, did my sanitary work with my 10 blade. Now I have a 30 blade and the only thing I do with a 30 blade is pads of feet. With this big pad here, we're going to go in a, in a V shape, just like this. Do not put much pressure with a 30 blade. It's a very close clip. And that's that. It is definitely much easier to do with the hair back system. I haven't <laughs> clipped without it in so long. So that's a clean pad and we're basically just cleaning off anything that he is going to stand on. Now it's time to scissor Charlie's head. I'm going to use strictly just my Kenshi lightning shears as well as my eight inch guide shears. I'm going to comb his brow towards his muzzle, towards his nose. From the corner of eye to the corner of eye, I am trimming his visor straight. I'm gonna comb that down one more time and take another look. Just make sure it's nice and straight and even. Right here, I'm gonna comb everything back towards his neck. I'm just gonna tilt his head down as if he was looking slightly down and I'm gonna blend everything in from the top of his skull into the body blade work, into the neck. I'm gonna fold the ear up. I'm not gonna pull it up high, I'm just gonna fold it back. I'm gonna scissor this that's hanging out and looking weird. I'm going to take a look at him from the side. We're just wanting a U shape 
towards the base of the ear. My daughter is singing upstairs. His mom wanted his head full today, so she didn't want much taken off. So now let's take a look at the cheek. We're gonna come up into a circle into the top of his skull, creating a circle shape. We don't really, we don't need to take much. I think his length is about right where she wants it. Now we're just gonna scissor across the top skull anything that our snap-on comb didn't take care of. Now on this side, same thing. I'm gonna comb it down. I'm gonna scissor off anything that's messing up our lines, the shape that we're after. We're gonna always comb up, guys, always comb up so you can pop out that hair that needs to go. Same thing with this ear, I'm gonna fold that back. We're gonna just tidy that up right there in front of his earlobe. Now, he's looking pretty good. We're gonna hold the chin up, we're gonna comb everything down, and I'm gonna tidy up where our clipper work is meeting our scissor work. Just tidy it up. Hold his chin up and out of the way, and that keeps everything tidy when he looks up. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna tidy everything up with the thinning shears here in a second. So I just shaped in his head, now it's time to do some thinning shear work. So all I'm really doing with my thinning shear is scissoring in a scissor action, what I would be doing if I were scissoring, and I'm just shaping and softening. That's a good way to describe it, it's softening. I'm softening my scissor lines. That's what we're doing. And if you have a lot of scissor lines, you soften a lot of scissor lines. It's just what we do. And that's what I like to do with my thinning shear. Right here above the ear, take your comb and comb it up. Let the ear lay as it wants to. And we're just going to blend that right into the top skull. That's it. If he had a lot of hair there, I'd be taking a lot off, but he doesn't. Right here, I'm gonna pull this lip back, you can see that this is uneven when we pull the lip back. That's because there's a little pocket right there. So I'm gonna slide that lip back and even that up. And I'm just going to comb everything down. I'm gonna take my thinner, thinner shears, blenders, and I'm just softening this line that I scissored. And this is just about done here on the head. Always keep their mouth shut. You can thin right here at the base of the ear and thin this. Just make sure you're not cutting anywhere near the ear. Now for Charlie's front leg, I'm just combing everything up. Charlie, you have to stand. Combing everything up and anything that's sticking out that doesn't belong there, I will scissor off. That's it, there's not a whole lot. Our snap-on comb work definitely set our length nicely for us. His underline already looks very nice. Just gonna tidy that up. Pick up this front paw, brush everything. Anything that he would be standing on, I'm going to scissor off flush. I'm trimming the under part of his pad. It's okay, big guy. Trimming across the pad this way. At the top there, because we don't want to we don't want to nick that pad. Now with the foot down on the table, I'm gonna pick this leg up so Charlie holds still. And I need to just round that foot like so. You can rest your bottom blade of your shear on the table. And just come on up and scissor everything that is obstructing that shape. That's all. Comb up, scissor down. 
We're just scissoring off things that our snap-on comb missed, and, and it's sure to miss, trust me. And that's why snap-on combs save us so much time in our scissor work, because they really do the bulk of the work for us. They set the length. Charlie has a very nice leg to begin with, so it's really, it doesn't leave a lot for me to scissor off. And the inside of the leg, same thing, I'm gonna comb that up. And I'm gonna scissor straight up anything that shouldn't be there. I'm gonna tidy up right here. Just stuff that is sticking out, you know? to make a better shape. See the difference between his little butt cheeks? I did not do this one and I did scissor this one. For the bottom of the foot, we're gonna pick the foot up, comb everything down, and we're just gonna, from the under part, we're gonna trim everything that he would be standing on. Trim sideways here at this pad. You don't wanna go this way, you'll cut that pad. You don't wanna do that. That pad sticks out a little further. And I can trim from this side a lot of the hair off. So when I put the foot down and comb everything up, I can now see what's left to scissor, just to make that shape look nice. You're the one creating the shapes, you know. You gotta keep that in mind. So you may ask, well, what shape am I after? Well, it's your shape, you created it. You're, you're looking for a round foot, a pillared leg and a round foot. And that's what, we, that's what we're trying to achieve. Whatever that means to you is what that shape will be. Now I'm doming the top of his foot. Okay, baby, you're doing great. Comb up, scissor down. Anything that's sticking out and creating a bad shape. Okay, I think that's the easiest way to um, to look at it, really. And now Charlie's all done, so let's take a look at him together. Remember, we put this trim on Charlie using mainly snap-on combs, the wall stainless steel snap-on combs. They really cut down our scissor work. That's the whole idea. So we can get a professional look even if we're just learning to groom. If you struggle with any areas of a groom, please leave a comment so we can share and learn together. Just leave a comment right here in the description of this video. Don't forget, we're better together. Smash that like button and share this video if you think it would help others.